Well, it's fall, and we've said goodbye to the extended summer sunshine. But with that, we say hello to longer, darker nights, which means it's perfect for stargazing. Unless, of course, it's cloudy or rainy. You know, it really depends a lot on the weather. So why not head to a spot where the local skies are always clear, the planetarium. We've been here since 1896. We are a natural history museum, but we have an amazing collection. Only about 1% of the museum's holdings is on exhibit. In addition to their extensive collection, you'll find this. We can show you what you'd expect to see in the night sky, void of light pollution from the constellations to planets that might be visible, and then even go a little bit further, thinking about nebulae, star clusters, and those types of things. The sky gets dark. You know, you kind of just see the beautiful star projector and the stars, and people are amazed. Uh, so that's still exciting. Um, I've been here many years, so to still see and hear the excitement, and even after when visitors share how they enjoyed the show, uh, it's really spectacular. Made possible thanks in part to a special piece. The projector we have is a Zeiss ZKP3 star projector. We actually have someone come from Germany once a year for its maintenance. It's I've uh, been here since 93, and it simulates the night sky. So, you know, we can do certain things. Of course, we complement it with videos and other uh, images uh, for people to think about what's in our night sky and astronomy. Something one woman took an interest in decades ago. Maribel Cormack, who our planetarium is named after, was a former director here. She actually started as an educator just like myself, um, and uh, became the director, and she was responsible for getting the first planetarium here. It was a Spitz projector. It's actually on exhibit at our museum. Plus, an exhibit dedicated to the International Space Station. One particular person, Jessica Meir, who was part of, uh, went to Brown University, uh, also part of the NASA Rhode Island Space Grant Consortium, and uh, not only did she go to the space station, she's one of the uh, astronauts that is hoping to go to the moon. Whether you're visiting for the first time or there every day, you're in for a treat. When the lights get dark and just seeing the stars and just kind of takes my breath away still. That's so cool. It, re it is really cool. So it's in Roger Williams Park. Right. Which you've probably driven by the building a million times. Umpteen times. Right. If you haven't already gone there before, uh, the Museum of Natural History is great. I was telling you while we were watching this, uh, what they have on display is just one percent of mm. their entire collection. So they have so much there, but the planetarium, you'll you'd love it. Looks, it. Uh, it really does. Like it looks, mm -hmm. it looks so cool to see that. Yeah, it, it stuff that they, you know, some great pictures of from space when they talk about the International Space Station, right. and then all the local ties too. Like you yeah. don't realize how many. Local people have been involved. They in do the a lot of field trips here, right? With yeah. kids and stuff too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you can book tickets to a planetarium show, which is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's it super dark in that room. You can do so by going to the museum's website. We have a link to their website posted on ours.